And back to our breaking news this hour. In northern Kosovo, NATO troops have used tear gas against local Serbs as violence has flared up again at the border with Serbia. And NATO K4 peacekeepers soldiers dismantled barricades near Mitrovica and laid barbed wire. Shortly after, hundreds of local Serbs tried to remove their barbed wire, but NATO troops responded with tear gas. Local media reports several injuries. Tensions in northern Kosovo have been on the rise for months now over disputed border crossings. The government of the breakaway province wants to control the border with Serbia to enforce an important ban resisted by local Serbs who stay at the barricades. In July, a policeman was shot dead whilst Kosovo police were trying to take control of the border posts. Then a temporary deal was reached between Pristina and Belgrade to allow the international peacekeepers to guard the border, but was rejected by local Serbs. Kosovo proclaimed independence in 2008, but Serbia doesn't recognize the breakaway move. And we cross live now to Don Dibar. Okay, so hopefully we will cross live to, to the guest uh, from... Uh, from Kosovo, but uh, right now in northern Kosovo, NATO troops have used tear gas against local Serbs as violence has flared up again at the border with Serbia. And um, NATO K4 peacekeeper soldiers dismantled barricades near Mitrovica and laid barbed wire. So these are breaking news this hour for you. And shortly after, hundreds of local Serbs tried to remove their barbed wire, but NATO troops responded with tear gas. Local media reports several injuries. Tensions in northern Kosovo have been on the rise for months now over disputed border crossings. The government of the breakaway province wants to control the border with Serbia to enforce an import ban, resisted by local Serbs, of course, who stay at the barricades now. In July, a policeman was shot dead whilst Kosovo police were trying to take control of the border posts. And right now we can actually cross live to Don Dibar, an anti-war activist and journalist in New York. Um, um, hello to you. Thank you very much indeed for your time. So what is this latest flare-up likely to mean? Well, you know, it's interesting because let's start with the original context. Okay, NATO is the United States in terms of policy, in terms of where the orders originate. And um, at the very beginning of his term, before his term began, Barack Obama was given the Nobel Peace Prize. Since then, we've seen um, an expansion of the Iraq War and of the Afghanistan War and the uh, war on Libya and uh, other things, Uganda. Um, and now we're seeing Kosovo. This, they've been active. NATO has been active. The uh, K-4 forces have been active at least since July again. This was Bill Clinton's big war, by the way, uh, in the 90s, as people remember. And now, uh, now they're tear gassing people. We had dead policemen, other Serbs that were injured and, and seriously injured in July and August. It's, it's frightening because it, the, the moves where they're moving troops into Australia to uh, threaten China, the uh, missile, quote unquote, defense that's being installed in Europe pointed at Russia. Serbia was one of the places, the flashpoint for World War I, and Obama seems to be starting trouble around the globe right now, and it's frightening to see this. So, you know, the specifics of it are still coming out, other than, you know, this was a NATO move against the uh, people on the ground there, and, uh, but in the larger context, it's very frightening. Yes, it sounds very serious indeed. So what is the legal basis for K4's action now? You know, K-4 is a uh, construct that was developed for, you know, it's the United Nations and developed for uh, that which happened in Yugoslavia after the West decided to pick it apart. So there is a legal basis, you know, uh, de jour for this, but the legal basis comes more or less at the point of a gun. And so it's kind of hard to... You know, it's one thing to talk about a legal basis pro forma, and it's another to talk about a legal basis de facto. Um, I really don't see a justification for what's happening in terms of the actual facts on the ground. I just see one more act that's a pattern of blatant international aggression by NATO and the United States through its, I guess you could call the United Nations its agent, the way it's behaved in the last year or two. Um, and it's it just, again, it, it's frightening to me sitting here. 
some politicians believe if Serbs allow Albanian authorities to control the border, it means, in effect, that Serbia recognizes Kosovo. Is that valid? Well, you know, Kosovo has been a part of Serbia for a long time. Um, and uh, Kosovo and Serbia did very well together uh, within Yugoslavia until tensions were, you know, stirred up more or less by uh, U.S. intelligence um, over the course of the Cold War. Um, to the extent that there were any, uh, you know, surviving um, ethnic uh, tensions that were, I guess, historic in, in the area, uh, they were manifest with the uh, Kosovoans, um, you know, having sympathy towards Albania when it was more or less a Stalinist state as opposed to, you know, the path that Yugoslavia had taken um, in the 50s and 60s. But people got along there very well until, you know, again, until more or less the uh, period post-Soviet Union when um, the Western powers were making major mischief within uh, the remaining members and former members of the uh, old Eastern Bloc. And, you know, the United States, as people know, was very heavily involved. Uh, Bill Clinton bombed Europe for the first time uh, since World War II in the middle of all of that. And so um, I, I can't see this as anything else but some sort of a move by the United States and or NATO to create some additional tensions in that area. I don't know if this is some sort of um, CIA move to counter the move that Russia made uh, to counter the uh, missile defense where Russia just recently said that they would you know deal with the uh, missile defense by targeting it you know the so-called missile defense I don't know if this is a slap back in their face there or if there is some other you know piece on a ch larger chessboard that this represents again this most recent round has been going on since July but it's just it's really frightening to me this Nobel Peace Prize winning president has more uh, uh, physical confrontations going on around the world uh, than anyone in the last 30 or 40 years that I can think of. And it seems that every day there's a new point of, uh, you know, contention and with uh, hostilities or threatened military hostility. We're looking right now at the introduction of troops in Uganda, a threat to uh, blow up uh, the uh, nuclear power plant in, uh, in Iran, um, the introduction of troops in Australia with their guns aimed at China, you know, within the last week or two. What? I, I'm really very troubled by all of this. Yes, let's talk about European efforts to resolve the, the whole thing. Brussels has taken active part in resolving the crisis. Uh, what role can it play at this point? Well, to the extent that Brussels has an independent line to follow, perhaps a constructive one, but, you know, the role that Europe played in the, um, you know, the uh, post-Cold War Yugoslavia, again, it was not really an independent role that it played at all. It, the, the, it was very one-sided. Uh, the Serbs were painted as, you know, outlaws. I mean, they tried Milosevic in, it was in Brussels, right, in the ICC. So um, you can't exactly say that they're honest brokers in this move. So I'm suspicious of anything that comes out of there, hopeful that something independent of what's happening in the White House or in Langley uh, might have a better outcome or a more just outcome. But, you know, that's hopeful. I don't really expect that at all. Right. We also know... OK, so our time is over, I'm afraid. So... That was Don Debar, an anti-war activist and journalist in New York. Thank you very much indeed for sharing your views with us. Thank you.